Hello everybody, Jim here. Well, I recently just watched the first five episodes of the new Genti Tartakowski uh, Adult Swim animated series, Primal. This has been a show I've been looking forward to for a while. I'm someone who was a fan of Samurai Jack since I was... Jeez, how long ago was that? Jeez. Close to 20 years now. So, a new series by the same creator was always intriguing. He also did another one, um, Symbiotic Titan, that lasted only one season, and that's a shame because that also was a pretty good show. This one looks very different as it premiered on Adult Swim and would be apparently a show that would be incredibly violent, made for adults only, and featured no spoken dialogue whatsoever in a, a world similar to One Million Years B.C. or an old caveman movie where you would have cavemen and dinosaurs, non-avian dinosaurs, interacting with each other, which, of course, is not remotely historically accurate, but it's pretty cool for a picture, but no dialogue. And I thought that was a really intriguing idea, as with Samurai Jack... One of the best things about that show, one of the main reasons that show really stuck in a lot of people's minds, was the fact that it managed to tell its stories very often using only visuals and very minimal dialogue. Generally, the strongest moments in Samurai Jack, or some of the strongest episodes, were the ones with the least amount of dialogue. Oftentimes, when they had tried to do an episode with a lot more dialogue, it would kind of feel silly and bogged down. Like, for example, a first season episode with the blind archers. Very little dialogue in that entire episode, and it's one of the best of the series. And I like when Jack fights the blind archers, it never actually tells you that the archers are blind. It never has a moment where Jack looks at the camera and says, These are guys are blind. I must fight them on their level because they cannot see. No, it trusts that the audience are smart enough to figure it out for themselves based on visual storytelling, and the show was really, really damn good at it. So the idea of an entire show that was just dialogue-free storytelling was a really cool idea. So I gave the first five episodes of this show a watch, I believe they said next Saturday they'd continue the series. This is just a review of the first five episodes. I have to say, I loved every minute of this show. There's so many things to love about it. The animation has a really nice flow to it. It has a bit of a sketchy, slightly simplistic style, similar to Samurai Jack, but a little bit more detailed than that. And even if there's not a whole bunch of detail, even if you could tell this was definitely still made on a television budget, it still has a really nice flow flow and edge to it. Everything is very beautifully visceral. And the music really gives the show a really intense edge. And it really packs on the violence. There's so many brutal kills throughout the series. I can't even keep track of them all. There must have been dozens, possibly hundreds of different kills. It follows the story of a caveman who's According to production notes, named Spear, and uh, a dinosaur he kind of forms a friendship with, a Tyrannosaurus-like dinosaur, who the production notes is named Fang. They're never actually named in the show, because again, the show has no dialogue, who kind of are united by tragedy in the first episode, and throughout the remainder uh, of the episodes, basically just try to survive together, usually... Spear rides Fang through some type of crazy environment and gets attacked by something. And then the two of them kind of have to team up in order to neutralize this threat. And what I really liked about the relationship between these two characters is it never really felt like this was a boy and his dog storyline. It would have been very easy for them to simply give Fang very dog-like qualities in order for the audience to really identify with him. You kind of saw that in, say, Pixar's The Good Dinosaur, which was kind of an inverse on the boy and his dog formula, but with the human character being more like a dog, or with the How to Train Your Dragon movies, which, of course, made the dragons all like dogs. They lick, they bow, they all behave like dogs. This is very clearly targeting dog lovers. They're saying since people love their dog, they'll love this character who's given the qualities of dogs. But thankfully, this show doesn't do that. Fang never feels like Spear's dog. 
he really does feel like a dinosaur. He feels like an often vicious creature. And they manage to still form a bond with each other despite that, but his savage dinosaur nature is never lost from that. And that's a really clever thing I really loved about this show. It seems like a very formulaic thing, and maybe to an extent it is. I don't know how long they'll be able to continue doing that formula. But they come up with such unique and whacked out visuals in each and every episode that it never felt boring. Like there's one where they go enter this river of snakes. I think that's literally the title of the episode. There's another where they get attacked by all these raptors. And then later these giant bat monsters, and they're really... Just scary looking things <laughs> with a giant spider at the end. There's uh, this one where they're in a gladiatorial match with these eight men. Oh, it's, it's all fucking whacked. It is so over the top with its visceral, bloody, awesome animated action, which is just all so perfectly well staged. Like, every bit as good as the best action sequences in Samurai Jack. It's just really a good time to watch this show. And I really love this show for really trying something different. This show feels like absolutely nothing that's been on television before. I guess with its world where caveman and dinosaurs are interacting with each other, I can kind of assume that this is not set in any kind of ancient past or fantasy world. What if this is set in like a post-apocalyptic future where man went crazy, genetic engineering, brought back dinosaurs, created a bunch of other monsters, and then eventually civilization collapsed and the world became this? I'd actually love if that was like in the season finale, what they find out what the show was, that that was like the twist ending. If That, that would be a fucking awesome twist to end this season on. We'll see where the show can go. I'm concerned that, at least with the first five episodes, as cool as they were, that they really need to find something new to do. And it's really difficult to tell a story or really change anything up in a show that necessitate that it have no dialogue whatsoever. For the first five episodes, I was highly entertained by this show. And I really recommend giving it a watch if you got Adult Swim. Well, thanks everybody. Um, have a great night. I hope to see you soon. Bye.